Hi, my name is Kimberly Skirm. I'm a PhD student at Oregon State University. For my research, I've studied native bumblebees in the Willamette Valley of Western Oregon. For part of my research, I was able to catch local queens like this one here and use them to rear colonies. This video is meant to serve as a guide for those who are also interested in catching local queens in their area and rearing bumblebee colonies. Here are some examples of the bumblebee species native to the Willamette Valley. This is the area where I conducted my research. As you can see, there's an immense amount of diversity in the bumblebees that we have in this area. This is a candid look inside of a Bombus falsosinskii bumblebee nest. This diagram displays the typical life cycle of a bumblebee nest. The first developmental stage of bumblebees is the egg stage. The next stage of development is the larval stage. Bumblebees progress to the pupal stage of development. The last stage of development is the adult stage. The first step to capturing a bumblebee queen is to find an area in which you have a lot of flowers in bloom, such as this. To capture a queen using the container method, all you need to do is have a container that has a removable lid, and then you want to locate a queen, as you can see here, and basically you just want to come down very gently and put the container over the top of your queen, and the queen will fly into the container, as you can see. And so now you've successfully caught your first bumblebee queen. To catch a bumblebee queen using the net method, you can simply locate a queen, as you can see here, and then basically just place your net over the top of the queen, and then gently lift your net up, and the bumblebee will actually fly to the top of your net, as you can see here. Here she comes. And you can see if you hold your net straight up, the queen will fly to the top, and then you can just fold your net over. And as long as you hold the net up, the bees will basically fly up towards the sun. Queens prefer a small area when starting a nest, so you should place your queen in a small box or container. I recommend using a wood box that actually has ventilation holes so that air can circulate through the colony, in this case covered in a wire mesh, and also a hole so that workers, once they emerge from the colony, can leave the nest and bring back food material for the developing colony. Now to your box, you can also provide a lid. In this case, if you use a clear lid, you can actually watch your colony as it develops. And then just to, be, uh, to create a weather barrier, you can also use a wood lid to shelter uh, the interior of your colony. Now, as the colony develops and increases in size, you may need to move your bees to a larger size container. Again, I recommend using a wood container, and similar to before, it has ventilation holes on the side that are covered in a wire mesh, and also a hole in the center so the bees can leave the nest and forage in the landscape. Now, you can also use a very similar clear cover as before to put on top of the box and watch the colony, and then if you have enough material, you can put a piece of metal or any other weather stripping to the wood top that you apply on top of the nest box. And if for some reason you're putting the nest at a higher location, you can also put a piece of rope or string that will hold the top on the container. Now you'll also notice the front of this nest box is painted, and if you install this outside, this will allow bees to have an orientation a cue to be able to find the nest. Bumblebees need both pollen and nectar to survive. You will need to provide both of these resources for your queen. Bees need a continuous supply of both pollen and nectar, which they can obtain by visiting flowers. You will need to provide both of these food resources to your queen and the developing colony until it reaches a large enough size and the bees can forage on their own. The first resource, pollen, can be provided to your queen using fresh local pollen collected from honeybee hives. This will serve as a protein source. You should replace the pollen at least three times per week when feeding your queen. The second resource queens will need is nectar. Nectar is a solution which can be made by mixing honey or sugar with water. This serves as a carbohydrate source for your queen. You need to provide pollen to your queen by using methods which would mimic her natural ability in collecting and processing pollen in the wild. The first step is that you need to grind the pollen. You can do this by using either a mortal and pestle or a coffee grinder. To make your nectar solution, you can either use sugar or honey mixed with equal parts of warm water. If you do decide to use honey as your nectar solution, be aware that it does ferment, usually after a day, and so you need to replace this on a daily basis. Now I'd like
like to show you how to make the nature solution. Now you just want to stir the two together until you can see it's completely dissolved. To provide the nectar solution to your queen, you can use a small container that has a detachable lid and a cotton wick. What you want to do is take the cotton wicks and put them into another container that has the nectar solution and allow them to soak for approximately 10 minutes. Once they've soaked, you can see they'll become saturated with the nectar solution. And then at this point, you want to take the top off your container, put a small hole through it, and then put your wick through that hole. And then you want to take the bottom of your container and fill the receptacle with nectar, and then attach your lid. You place your ground pollen on a sheet of wax paper, and then you actually want to add some of the nectar solution that you've made previously to the pollen. And what you want to do is make a paste. You just want to continue mixing both the pollen and the nectar together. As you can see, you'll start forming a paste or a dough-like substance. And once you get it to this consistency, sort of that of peanut butter, you can see here, then you want to actually roll it out and form a long tube. Once you get the tube formed, you can actually pull off just a small piece of pollen and from that you want to make a very small piece. So now that you have the container ready for the queen, the first step involves sealing off this hole in the center of the nest so the queen doesn't escape. In this case I'm going to use a cork, but you could also use a piece of tape just to cover that hole. Once you have that covered, next you want to line the inside of the nest box with a soft insulative material. For this you can use upholsters cotton or fiberglass insulation. Then once you have your material, the next thing you want to do is just to cut it so it form fits the interior of your box. And then you want to place that inside of the container, press it down so it's even on the bottom. And then inside of that you're going to put your feeder that you had before on one side of the container and the pollen ball that you've created on the other. And I also recommend using just a small uh, amount of the insulative material and just kind of pack that around the pollen ball and this will provide extra material for the queen as she makes her nest. Next, because you have a clear cover, if you decide to use that method, you can just slide it to one side and then you can take your queen that you collected earlier in the container and gently put her down into the nest box and then slide the cover back on top. Next you want to apply the wooden cover to that and now you have successfully located your queen. The next several slides show the colony growth and developmental cycle of the nest that you should see over time. 